Hello and welcome back to our testing of hard drives for NAS and data center utilization and we are looking at the noise they generate. Yes, we're going to talk about performance but of course the main concern here as I'm sure the thumbnail has indicated we are looking at the noise these generate both in terms of decibel and of course what the noise actually sounds like because a number of you are seeing drives like this. This is the Seagate Exos series, an enterprise class drive. Uh, this is the 14 TB. Uh, you're seeing a lot of these drives arriving at a price point that's actually not too bad. Yes, of course, it costs more than standard class hard drives, but not so much that it's frightening. And what we want to do is show you guys, as we talk about in a lot of videos, that if you do install enterprise class drives like these inside your NAS, your 2, your 4, your 8 bay device, they do make a lot more noise. So we are going to be looking at the noise they generate and the kind of noise they generate. But there are a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, when we go into the greater depth of noise these drives create, bear in mind that I have amplified that noise ever so slightly using this mic over here at the top right of the screen. It's not the same mic that I'm talking on here, but that mic is designed to show you guys a better density of the noise that's going to be generated from these. Also, it's worth highlighting this mic here. This is connected to our audio monitor here on the side of the screen, again on the left hand side that you're viewing there, and this is going to give us a decent decibel reading, but it's worth bearing in mind that we're not utilising thousands of pounds of equipment. I can't justify that on this small channel, and also I'm not sure whether these videos are going to be that popular. Not hard drive noise is pretty niche indeed. Consequently, we are using this tool here and that mic. It goes down uh, to about 25-30 dB, but we are going to have to configure the mic in advance to remove the background noise. So, for example, if we go quite real, net, real, real low right now and get the measurement there on screen, I'll show you guys how quiet this room is. And even the tool itself highlights that that is a quiet room reading. And what we want to do is remove the background noise as much as we can while still being able to maintain and monitor the drive noise generated. Now we could, uh, we're going to configure this noise level and I'm going to go for a configuration of minus 25. Now if we look at it there, we do have some background noise just outside the building but that will go away shortly. So what we can do from there is lower this decibel reading. So what we're going to do is minus 25. We're going to minus that down to minus 25 for the calibration to stay within. And then from there, it will give us a much easier reading to play with, like so. And we're hitting that 910, which I think is the sweet spot for what we want to go with today. Because it's worth highlighting that we can't really get it down to zero. If we go much lower than that, there's a chance we're going to get a false reading. If we go to, say, minus 30, it may not be as useful. So now we've calibrated that mic to be a little bit lower for us. The next thing I want to show you is that the dock we're using today, this is a Sabrant USB 3 hard drive dock generates practically no noise. So what we're going to do is turn it on and I'm going to show you guys that it has no fan and practically no electronic background noise. So turning it on. And we've got that nice low reading there. So let's turn that off. And from here, we can now start making our way into installing this drive. So we're going to be testing the boot up noise. We're going to be testing some AJA performance benchmarks in the noise it generates and some standard Windows read write testing. So let's get this drive inside. It's worth highlighting I've already um, enabled this drive to be visible um, as an external disk using disk part already in preparation for this video along with a bunch of other drives from previous videos and what we're going to do is boot this up and it should automatically show as that external drive for us but what I want you to do is keep an ear open for the spin up sound because remember this is an enterprise level disk and the noise will be noticeable and remember we've inflated the noise a little bit in post so you can properly identify that noise so let's go ahead and spin up that drive. I'm going to be quiet now for about 30 seconds.
as you can see, even in idle, this drive will make more noise. It has to be ready to switch to active and idle very quickly indeed. And also, due to its larger uh, availability of platters inside and the actuator and the arm having to work so much harder, the result is that enterprise drives will always generate more noise. So the first test we want to do is a standard AJA performance benchmark test. As we can see, the drive has appeared, that new volume there. And what we're going to do, Oh, well, no, we didn't want to open paint.net, did we? Let's lose that. Sorry, touch something at the bottom of the screen we didn't need to. We are using OBS right now as well, so hopefully that didn't affect things too much um, in the recording. And what we're going to do is get the uh, charts down the bottom. We've got drive E, our external. We've got a 4 gig test file, and we're going to run that AJA test. Now, bear in mind, this isn't going to be a perfect test because it's going to be read and write independently. It's not going to be together. That Save that for the next test. This is going to give you some idea about a solid read or a solid write action and the noise it will generate. Obviously, the performance is almost certainly going to be hitting that 2 to 250 easy, but we really want to notice the noise on the left-hand side of that screen. So let's click that. So again, only the slight spikes uh, in the chart with regards to when we saw it changing gears there. So again, not a huge impact, which is very, very good. And again, as mentioned, this isn't really going to indicative. Watch the spike. Just that tiny click there as it goes between those operations. And again, it's more complex than that, but you can certainly see those spikes happening. We'll do one last one. a small noticeable noise there so let's stop that drive there and next we're going to move into the windows read and write testing so um, what we do is we go into that connected different drive this is a sata ssd inside my system there's 240 gig of data in here made up of lots of different images made of different files and a mischief movie night so i recommend you check out their show fantastic stuff and from there go into um, the external drive like so we're going to create a new folder and this folder, just going to call it that, we're now going to copy from the SATA SSD inside my system here, and we're going to copy it onto the external Exos drive there. So bear in mind, the noise can be a little bit higher than what we've seen before, but not a vast amount. This is still a write action almost exclusively. We're not going to let the whole thing run. We're just going to leave it for about a minute or so just to show you guys uh, the noise and performance generated. So again, not so bad. And again, that's because this is a heavy write-only action. There's no reading happening from the disk. So there's none of that flicking between the two processes as you would find in a large RAID array that has multiple disks inside with multiple disks all reading and writing for parity data and redundancy as well as activity within the single storage pool. So what we're going to do is cancel this operation check how much data we've done. I think there should probably be about 10 or 12 or 13 gig of data. And we're going to copy that data. And again, these are large files. So we're not really dealing with small files here. And what we're going to do 
is go in and create a brand new folder from within the same drive and this time we're going to copy into it so it's going to be both read and write action within the same disk which will ramp things up now if we were using thousands of small files and databases and more this would be more of a flick and change between all those different players also if we drive we're using a drive at 50 to 70 percent capacity which is what we're going to do in our next stage of tests after all these preliminary tests then we will see different activity but for now let's try this very simple operation to show that noise one two three go So straight away, you must have noticed there that there is a lot more background clicks there in the background during this read-write operation. It's also worth highlighting that, of course, the read-and-write performance is not going to be the same as the previous test because rather than copying from an SSD at SATA onto this Enterprise SSD uh, hard drive, which is SATA, we're using a hard drive for the read and write operation internally. The result is that you are not going to see the kind of performance you'd see in a large RAID array, nor that of an SSD. Hard drives are not designed to be utilized in this way, hence why the performance has now dipped within this single drive operation. So don't punish the drive for that. But what I want to show you now, before we wrap things up, is some relativity to the noise we've heard today. In a moment, I'm going to let that run for another few seconds. So let's power down that drive and get that sense of difference in noise with and without the drive running. No doubt you heard that drive spinning down, and that's another thing with enterprise level drives. There's a lot more spin up and spin down on these drives. And again, that's that sense of objectivity about the background noise and the drive running simultaneously. So let's go ahead and spin it up again so we can remember it before we wrap up this video. And I hope this video has shown you some idea about enterprise level drives and the noise they generate. I've already covered a few non-enterprise drives in this series and we will be looking at the comparison between enterprise and non-enterprise drives simultaneously to give you guys some idea about the noise difference between them and particularly if you're going to install them in smaller desktop environments. Now, if you are interested in learning more, please click subscribe. We'll be going through a bunch of drives and it's going to be great to gauge opinion if you guys really enjoy this and maybe we can extend this into a larger array of testing otherwise click like to let me know that you guys did enjoy it, and i will see you next time